Algebra 2, we're in chapter 11, and in section 2, we're going to talk about factorials, then also uh, something called permutations. Let's look at example 1 together. Uh, there are seven dwarves that need to line up in a row to kiss Snow White. So in how many different ways can the dwarves line up in a row? So let's see, they're in a line, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Look, there's seven different people. So being first in line here, there are seven different dwarves who could actually stand there. Just like you'd imagine seven people here, you and six of your friends, any one of those people could be standing first in line. Once that has been chosen, though, now there are only six people who you could choose to take the second place in the line. You get the idea. Another person is gone, so now you only have five, then four, then three, then two. Finally, there's only going to be one choice remaining for the last person in line. The fundamental counting principle, something that we were doing repeatedly yesterday, is really saying, look, you can go ahead and multiply those numbers together, seven times six, times 4, times 3, times 2. You could even put in a times 1 if you'd like. And that's 5,040. 5,040 different ways that the dwarves could line up. This is where order matters. It, it really does matter who is standing first and so forth. What you're seeing here, though, when you multiply 7 times the integer below it, continuing to subtract 1 to get to the next integer, this is known as a factorial. We can write that as 7 with an exclamation point. So this 5 with the exclamation point, a 5 factorial, would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. A 4 factorial, likewise, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You get the idea. Let's just say that you wanted to work out 5 factorial. By the way, we can multiply this. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 would be 60. And 60 times 2 is 120. The question is, does your calculator evaluate factorials? It does. Uh, and you can see in the notes here we have how to do it. We're going to say 5 factorial. So I want to have a 5 in there. How do we get this exclamation point symbol, though, the factorial symbol? You go to the math button, and that's right over here, far left uh, column here, the, the first column. Press math. You'll go to PRB for probability. Go and hit your right arrow all the way. You can see you will down arrow to number four, the exclamation mark right here. And then you have 5 factorial. Like we said, that's 120. We worked it out by hand, but this is the nice, quick, easy way. Now, Alex is going to give you a number of problems just like this. 5 factorial times 7 factorial, all over 3 factorial, 9 factorial. Well, with a calculator, this becomes really rather simple. So what I'm going to do is you know, create a fraction. And we'll say 5. And we'll say math. By the way, if you want a shortcut, hit the left arrow. Instead of having to right arrow three times, you can just kind of go uh, backwards that way. Hit the left arrow to go to PRB. Come down here, and you've got your factorial. Then I'll hit 7 in math. And once again, we'll uh, get that factorial. Come down here, we'll have a 3 math and... Uh, Again, click over to PRB, get that factorial. One more step, we'll have a 9 math, and uh, bring this down here. And then we'll have 5 over 18. So what's really nice about this is your calculator will break this down for you. You don't have to write everything out in super detail. Uh, you know, going 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and, and, you know, have all those multiplications. If you do, you'd notice there would be a lot of canceling. Uh, but thank goodness your calculator can do that very quickly. Now, 
For the next examples, we're going to deal with word problems involving permutations. Like I said, permutations are where order matters. It matters what comes first, what comes second. And we're going to find a way to count the number of ways we could gather something or, or have groups of something where order matters. So it says Goran is choosing a three-letter password. And uh, you can see order is going to matter in this password. Uh, you know, what letter comes first. Um, and and uh, the password cannot have the same letter repeated. You know, earlier uh, the other day, we dealt with this situation where we had letters. We have one, two, three, four, five. There are five letters that we have here. We have five choices for the first letter. We could either have an A, B, C, D, or E. But after that, we cannot repeat it. That letter is used. It cannot be used a second time. Whatever letter you've just chosen, you no longer have five letters to choose from. You have one less. Now you have four. Likewise, you've now chosen another letter. You no longer have four choices. Now you're down to three. And very quickly, you could say 5 times 4, which is 20. 20 times 3 is going to be 60. There would be 60 passwords that could be created. Take a look at example 3. There are six swimmers in a race. There will be a first place and a second place prize awarded. So we've got first. We've got second. And how many different ways can the two prizes be awarded? Well, again, you've got six total swimmers. You could say, look, any one of those six people, guys or girls, could get first place here. But nobody's going to get first place and second place. Once we've said, look, pick somebody to stand there in first place, you no longer have six people to choose from. You have five people to choose from. So six times five very quickly is just going to get you 30. All right, let's take a look at this last problem here. There are four floats in a parade. So we'll say one, two, three, four. The parade is trying to determine the order in which the floats should appear. So all the floats are going to appear. Let's say that this is out in front. And, uh, you know, this would be like at, at the head of the parade. How many choices do you have? Well, you've got four floats. You could have any one of those taking that first position. Then we're down one. We'll have three choices for the second. We're down one right now, two, and then a one. You can see that's actually a factorial, isn't it? Four times three, of course, is going to get you a 12. 12 times two is 24. You could work it out uh, in your head or with a calculator. But guys, that's really all we've got uh, for today. And uh, so hopefully this is going well for you.